I'm Jolene Wynn, and this is the Porn Addict's Wife podcast, episode number 122, Worrying About the Past. Your life does not have to revolve around your husband's pornography addiction. You are not defined by his choices or by what he sees on a screen. You are not just the porn addict's wife. You are so much more. In this podcast, I'm going to teach you how to go from handling it to healed because I've been where you are and you don't have to stay there. My name is Jolene Nguyen. I'm a member of the LDS faith, a certified life coach, and a wife of a former porn addict. And this is a podcast for the porn addict's wife. Hello, my ladies. How are you? I am doing great. Today is September 11th, and I just want to take a moment to recognize that I almost didn't record this today because it's just kind of a different day where I'm in a different headspace, but it is such an important day to me and I wanted to share that with y'all. So I'm going to begin with with that. Um, So today is September 11th, 2022, and 21 years ago was 9-11 when the terrorist attacks occurred. And that was a very impactful day for me. I lived in Delaware. I grew up in Delaware. My dad had an office in the South Tower of the World Trade Center. And he had, there were multiple offices and he went up to New York and worked in that office. As far as my recollection, maybe once a month, um, at least frequently, he would take the train up to New York and he would go and he would work there. And on that day, on September 11th, he actually was with all of his senior staff in Texas for a big business conference, or they were buying a company, something like that. They were in Texas and I was in ninth grade. And I got up that morning and I had um, scripture study before school. That was something that our church does. We call it seminary and it's just Bible study before school. So we got up and we had that and we made it to school and school started about 745. And my seminary teacher who also worked for my dad, um, he was planning on going up to New York that day as well. And originally he had decided to skip teaching seminary and just go up early, but then he decided to teach seminary and catch the later train. And thank goodness he did because he actually didn't end up going to New York, but he would have been there um, already in that morning. But long story short, um, everyone in my dad's office, they were on the 87th floor of the South Tower. They all made it out. And that was thanks to the manager at the time, the senior manager, who got everybody out of the building as soon as the first tower was hit, as soon as the North Tower was hit. And my dad, I just remember my dad spending the next three days, they they were in Texas. Obviously, they couldn't fly home, so they rented a car and they drove straight through the night. I remember my dad looking so tired. And for three days... It took them three days to get a hold of all of their people, all of their employees, all their staff, and confirm that they were all alive. And I remember my dad was just so tired, and he was just always on the phone or at the office. And it was a very impactful day for me. That was uh, a day that um, really inspired me to join Army ROTC when I was in college. And that was just... I remember not only that day, but I remember the day after how unified this country was and everyone was just American and everybody felt so, you know, there were flags everywhere and ribbons on all the trees and it was just a beautiful time. And that's what I teach my kids about and remember. So this morning I got up at five and went to our local baseball stadium and we ran stairs with some of the firefighters and some of the other, um, groups, some of the other fitness group, a fitness group in the area called F3. And we ran the stairs in honor of the firefighters that ran up the stairs in the towers. And then we had church. And then I took my kids to the 9-11 memorial service. We do it every year at our local fire station. And they actually have a piece of steel from one of the towers. And they, they it sits on a little plaque or on a little stand, it's just constantly there. And so they do a memorial service there every year. And so we took our kids and they come every year and it was just a great day. So I just wanted to take a moment and remember that day and remember how amazing it was for what happened afterward and yet how 
intense it was and what a tragedy it was for so many. And I want to encourage you all to take a moment to just remember and then be grateful for your own lives and for everything that you have. And if you've been affected by September 11th, then I just want to say my heart is with you. So let's dive into the podcast today. Oh, but first, okay, now we're going to deal with some stuff. (laughs) Sorry, ladies. Um, Thank you all so much for coming to Coach Week. It was a blast if you were able to come. And for those of you that weren't able to come this time, keep a lookout, go join my email list so that you guys can come next time. Okay, because it was so, so much fun. And I'm actually going to talk today on the podcast about something that came up on the calls. And then I also wanted to say thank you because my book, hit number one Amazon bestseller in multiple categories last week, which was so fun. If you guys haven't ordered the book yet, you can go to my website, jolenewin.com. There is a book tab now, and you can just go click that link and you can get the ebook. It is on sale until Tuesday, I believe. The, the 13th, I think it's still on sale for 99 cents. And you guys, if you are reading it, tag me, post it on Instagram and tag me. And I would love to to share it and see that you guys are sharing it. If you guys have a private account, I won't be able to share it or see it. But if you have a public account, let me know. If not, just shoot me a direct message. I would love to see if you guys are reading it. Tell me your thoughts. And if you guys haven't yet, if you've read it and you haven't yet left me a review, I would absolutely love it. Just go to Amazon and you can log in and leave a review and that will also help Um, Amazon show it to other people, just like the podcast. When you leave a podcast review, it lets iTunes know that you are liking the podcast and that it's worth showing to other people. Same for Amazon. So when you leave an Amazon review, then it will let other people, it'll show it to more people, it'll come up more, and then hopefully more people will see it and share it. So thank you guys so much because this is all due to you. I didn't buy any copies of my book. so, So thank you for making it an Amazon bestseller. This is totally a dream come true. Share it with all your friends, your family. That's the one one of the things that my whole goal was in creating this book was to create something that was shareable. And with all the things you guys are learning on the podcast, I know sometimes we really want to share with people, but we don't really want to bring up, hey, I'm listening to this podcast about pornography addiction and how it has to do with your husband. And I'm learning all these things and they're great. This is a way for you to share it. So share it with all your people. Take it to your book club. And I'm just so grateful to all of you. Thank you so much. Okay, let's dive in today about worrying about the future when you're worrying about the past, okay? That's what we're really gonna talk about. I had this come up several times, and so I wanna discuss it on the podcast. On Coach, during Coach Week last week, in several different examples, there were women that brought up what if, right? And this is what happens when we have something in the past that has happened, then our brain wants to use it in order to try to predict the future. Okay, because our brain, remember, is motivated by three things, and one of those things is to avoid pain. So if something has happened in our past that has brought up a lot of emotional pain, that created a lot of emotional pain, then our brain says, let's not do that again, let's avoid that at all costs. So this is why your brain will take little red flags of things that happened in the past and worry about them in case they happen in the future. Your brain only has your past as a frame of reference, okay? Your brain can't actually predict the future, but this is what it's trying to do. Your brain is trying to predict the future by taking what happened in the past, figuring out if there's any type of physical red flag or sign of it, and then projecting it into the future to try and prevent yourself from feeling that same emotional pain again. Does that make sense? So what ends up happening is your brain starts to worry about the past, thinking that it will somehow make you more prepared for the future. Does that make sense? Do you guys follow me? So let me give you guys an example. If you, if your husband um, told you he relapsed when he was on a business trip, then maybe the next time he has a business trip, your brain will be like, oh, that's a red flag, or your brain will worry about him ever going on a business trip because it thinks that what happened in the past is what's gonna happen in the future. Does that make sense? Your brain will take little red flags, which it's always going to be physical things, okay? It's gonna be actions that he's taking, words that someone has said, because that's the only thing that your brain can see. Or it'll be an interpretation of those actions. He's been distant lately, right? That's just a thought that we have about his actions, about what he's doing. But that thought is what we are worrying about because it's a red flag 
from something in our past, that we're worrying about something in our past, and projecting that fear onto the future. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Now, here's what I want to offer to y'all. It feels really important to do this. Your brain, again, is wired to do this. It is wired to avoid emotional pain. However, what happens is your brain thinks that worrying about it right now in the present, worrying about something that happened in the past, in the present, is somehow going to make future pain avoidable or at least less intense. Do you guys see this? So you're creating worry in the present. You're feeling it right now over something that happened in the past. In an attempt, your brain thinks that if you worry about it right now, it'll somehow hurt less later. Do you guys see this? The problem with this is that it's a lie. You cannot avoid future emotional pain by creating anxiety or worry in your present. Do you guys see this? If you are worried about him relapsing because it's happened in the past, you don't want it to happen again, obviously, but you're worrying about it in the present, it doesn't mean that in the future, if he relapses, it's going to hurt less simply because you worried about it. All it's doing is creating worry right now. Ladies, you cannot feel your feelings in advance. And it's going to hurt either way. Whether you worry about it right now or not, it's going to hurt because none of us want our husbands to watch porn. So unless you become okay with your husband watching porn, it's going to hurt if he does. Okay, worrying about it right now because it's happened previously is not going to prevent it from hurting in the future. You guys following me? Does this make sense? Our brain thinks that it's very important. It thinks that it's very adult. It sounds very responsible. It sounds very normal. It sounds very good even and normal to worry about something that caused you emotional pain in the past. But worry is an indulgent emotion. And what I mean by that is it's not something that produces anything. It's an emotion that we indulge in because it feels good. I mean, I know that it sounds crazy that worry can feel good, but it does. It feels good. It feels good to worry. It feels important. We, we think that worry means something. We think worry means that we care. We think worry means that we're paying attention. We think worry means a lot of things. If I care about my kids, I'll worry about them. Not necessarily. That's what I want to offer you guys today. The worry about the past is unnecessary. I had this thought one time when I was walking and it was really sunny outside and I saw my shadow and I had this thought. And if it helps you, great. And if it doesn't make any sense, just leave it. (laughs) Okay. But it made sense to me. Sometimes we gauge our future. Sometimes we look at our future by looking at our past, right? Just like I've been talking about, the worry that we have from the past, we actually project into the future. And gauging your future by your past is like judging your progress by your shadow. Ladies, think about it. When you're walking on a sidewalk and it's a really sunny day, as you walk, your shadow moves with you. And sometimes it's in front of you, and sometimes it's behind you, and sometimes you can't see it at all. And sometimes it's huge. Your shadow is enormous. And sometimes it's completely out of proportion. And yet that's what our past is like. We are taking this thing that is not even real. It's just kind of a mirage and it's always shifting. And our brain wants to make it mean that that's how we're actually moving forward. It wants to take our past and gauge our progress by our shadow. But sometimes our shadow is behind us. And so we think we've gone backwards. We're back to square one. Sometimes our shadow is bigger than we are. And it seems like it's huge and we can't even ever overcome it. And sometimes we can't see our shadow at all. And sometimes our shadow's in front of us. And you guys, when you are, that is what it's like when you try to take your past and kind of predict your future from it. It doesn't even make any sense. And most of the time it's going to be wrong because your past is not relevant. You guys hear me again? Your past is irrelevant. Worrying about your past is not going to prevent it from changing your future. In fact, what normally happens is when we worry about the past, we end up creating 
the future to be the same as the past. The things that we worry about, the things that we stress about, end up creating the same patterns that end up creating what we already had happen, which just proves to ourselves that the thing we were worried about, we should have been worried about because it happened again, okay? Now, I know that that's a little abstract, <laughs> okay? But what I wanna offer, ladies, is that worrying, even though it might feel important, is not going to help you in this case. Worrying about something that happened in the past, even if you see all the red flags, is only going to create more anxiety in your present, okay? Now, here's another thing that happens. When you worry about something that happened in your past, your brain looks to your past and says, okay, let's see if we can find all the red flags. Now, here's what happens. is because your brain is looking for red flags, what's it's going to do? It's going to find them. Confirmation bias. Anything you tell your brain to look for, it will find. So if you say, all right, let's look for red flags, your brain will start to see them. And when you start to see red flags, what happens? Then you start to get testy and judgmental and maybe you get a little short with your husband and you assume that he's lying and you distrust him in advance. And what happens when you start to distance yourself from him? Then he feels more alone and is more likely to be triggered and act out and relapse, which is what you were worried about in the first place. This is how you actually end up sometimes influencing the future By worrying about your past, you bring your past into your present, creating the same result as you've already had. Do you guys see this? This is why we end up with, with, um, we feel like we keep finding the same relationships. I don't know why I keep going after the same guy. I don't know why I keep ruining all my friendships. I don't know why I keep yelling at my kids. We end up recreating all of the same patterns because we worry about what's happening in the past and we're trying to avoid it and we don't even realize that we're doing it. You guys follow me? So what I want to offer, ladies, is that you let go of the worry. I want you guys to give yourself permission not to worry. And it's going to feel really odd, okay? And it's going to feel like it means something. It's going to feel like it means that you don't care whether your husband relapses. You're gonna think that it means that it's not important to you anymore. It's gonna feel like it means that you're giving him permission. None of that is true. All you're doing is giving yourself permission not to sit in worry because worry doesn't produce anything and worrying about your past is not going to change your future. It's not. Your past is irrelevant, ladies. And I want to encourage y'all to give yourself permission to let it go. All right, ladies, I love you guys so, so much. And I'll talk to you next week. So take care. All right, ladies, if you are loving what you are learning on the podcast, I want to invite you to come join my coaching program. This is where we take it to the next level. And we actually start applying and learning the how of moving forward. This podcast has taught you the what and the coaching program is where you're gonna learn the how. This is where you learn how to actually start moving forward, process all of that pain that you feel and let it go once and for all. If you are ready to finally move forward and stop living a life that revolves around your husband's pornography addiction, then I wanna invite you to come join me today. Just head to my website, jolinewin.com and sign up today. I can't wait to see you there.